Morning. <clears throat> Today, we're talking about the distinction between the heart and the mind. Now, different traditions have different understandings about the heart and the mind. So, as I use this a lot, these two distinctions, heart and mind, I want to be clear about what, how it is for me. Christianity, for example, I said to my niece, I said, you must follow your heart. She said, oh, no. And she quoted something from the Bible. Oh, the heart has wickedness and something, something, and something. And I said, oh, dear, what a pity. And then in Buddhism, they have different definitions for it. But what I mean is this. In truth, there isn't actually a distinction. There isn't a difference. It's all one. But for the sake of understanding, it's good to make this distinction. Because when you distinguish between two things, you open up a new a space, a new possibility of being. Something new can come out of that distinction. So what we're distinguishing here is the way I look at it is this. The mind is everything... Uh, is where mental states happen in the mind. Mental states happen in the mind. And what are mental states? Mental states are everything to do with thinking, remembering, memory, um, states of mental states are high mental states. It's got a very high mental state today, low mental states, it's depressed. All of this moods and emotions all are part of the mental mind domain in the way that I'm looking at it. And the heart, there is no thinking in the heart. Thoughts actually arise from there. They have their birth there. The fact that I am, I sense myself as an individual and thoughts arise from there, from the heart. But the thought, the heart doesn't think. The heart is the domain of silence. The heart is a domain of pure knowing. The heart is a domain of wisdom. But first, I come back into my heart. When I sleep, my consciousness, which all day has been looking at mental states, my consciousness returns into my heart. And I lose all consciousness of mental states, and all consciousness of I. But I'm not dead, am I? Because if, if a mosquito landed on my face, I'd probably just automatically squat it. Or if a draft came, I'd probably just automatically turn over without having it to go through a con the conscious self. Or if someone put my hand in warm water when I was in deep dreamless sleep, I would actually urinate, I'd piss myself, you try it. Because uh, there was awareness there, it's all the time there's awareness in every part of the body, but not consciousness. So, the in sleep, the consciousness returns into the heart. The heart is where I am. And who I am sitting in the heart the source point of my witnessing. That isn't broken, that isn't damaged, that isn't influenced by anything, that doesn't evolve, that doesn't change. And who I am in the mental realm is an ongoing construct. Thoughts feed the mind the currency of the mind and now there's also a difference between feeling and emotions the heart doesn't actually experience emotions the the heart only has feelings the heart is feeling and it's the mind that experiences emotions Emotions 
are always about coming from the past and they're always triggered by thought so you're watching a movie and something happens and it, you have a thought about it you recognize it and it triggers an emotion that you've been carrying that's not being fully resolved so it comes up again triggered by something different this time but it comes up again <coughs> Thank you. Comes up again, and it keeps on coming till it's resolved. Emotions don't come from the world. They come from me. They come from my pain body. So, for example, um, two people witness one person die, and they have two different reactions to the death of that person. One person who is very attached to the dying person experiences tremendous grief and another person who hated that person who died experienced a feeling of gladness I'm glad they've gone I never liked them so clearly the person dying did not emanate an experience otherwise they both would have got it the same the sun emanates heat. Whatever your position is, you, everybody gets that. But the experience of dying, or anything else, doesn't emanate an experience in itself. Otherwise, we'd all get it that way. So who we're being that the dying is gives us that experience. So the emotions don't emanate from what triggered them, the emotions are to do with our unresolvedness and our ignorance of what truly is. So, emotions are there. They're not wrong, they're just how it is until you resolve them and clear your emotional backlog, which then allows you to come into presence. And when you're present to the heart, you will find that there are no negative feelings in the heart. The heart-based reality, living from in a heart-based reality, there are no negative feelings. There is no sorrow there. There's no grief there. You are joy there. You are freedom there. You are peace there. You are love there. You're not feeling love. You're not feeling peace. These are more of a, in the realm of the emotion. But you actually are that there. So, in the world of the heart, there's no sorrow. There's no anger. There's none of that. There's flowing as awareness. And you are it. You're not experiencing it. Whereas when you're in the mind, in the mental states, then these feelings do come. The emotions are there. And that's what contributes to our suffering. And but you might say, oh, you know, I, I want to feel, I want to feel, you know, misery, anger, all these things. Because it's who I am, it's what life is. Well, it is what life is until you go deeper and you can move beyond that and you can literally as you realize the heart and as you start to flow and live in a heart-based reality you will notice that sorrow diminishes and what is there is true understanding even things when somebody dies there's grief the passing of things causes so much grief in people the passing of what's going on now the passing of normal going into uncertainty there's grief and anxiety these are emotions but where do these emotions spring from do they actually come out of the events or is it what we make of the events that causes the emotions because everybody makes something different everybody gets something different so 
what we need to realize is that we are the generator of the emotions and the emotions are all about what we haven't realized from the past and what we've made of the past and the meanings that we've given the past so then events happen in the present and triggers those old meanings and so what has not been fully felt comes up and there it is again if we really saw life as it truly is there is no cause for grief or sorrow the passing of an old friend would not be a cause for sorrow seen from the heart-based reality knowing how life actually is of course we have preferences we'd rather they were here than gone but even those preferences are coming out of mental states coming out of the mind and there's a place of equanimity there's a place of joy there's a place of seeing how life is and there it's not like you don't care for others but you've realized that the personality and the psychological self that you are identifying as that experienced all the motions the emotions to give it some sense of self actually you don't need to do that and you're not that so what you find is you become a channel through which love flows as compassion you know you can't act compassion compassionately you're so com no you has to it's when when we're in a heart-based reality when we're not there so to speak as chundering psychological cells then compassion can flow through us unobstructed so much of the time we are giving but we're giving with an agenda which means that it's not really giving so that's life inside the mind you know you you hear people say things like i gave so much i did so much for that person and they gave me gave me this they gave me nothing back because that wasn't really giving there was an agenda in that giving whereas in the heart-based reality there's no agendas the giving is giving the kindness is really kindness the generosity is really generous so this is a wonderful place to come from because it's so simple and the feelings are real and oceanic in their depth because when you're living in the mind and, and you are also got the world of emotions as part of a mentally based reality you never know when they're going to come up so you kind of you know because anything can trigger them you know your unfelt sadness about anything can be triggered by a movie can be triggered by something somebody says can be triggered by a piece of music anything can trigger it so we have this feeling like we don't really want to feel that feeling is a bit dangerous so we kind of close down because we don't want to we don't want to have the, ch the the possibility of feeling our pain so we close it down and what that the cost of that is that we become more and more mental and then our sense of experience from life comes by values that we create mentally you know like um, oh I feel happy because I've just bought something I want I'm unhappy because I couldn't get what I wanted we set up false values oh it's sunny today then then I can be happy it's a good day oh it was it's raining I, I hate the rain all this but it's never the real joy it's never the real happiness and we can live like that and without really noticing it our range of experience diminishes until basically we are just a sort of a mental a ball of mental not very muchness so the other possibility is going behind that recognizing that whatever I experience is coming from 
is I only know I'm experiencing because I'm witnessing it. And rather than looking at what I'm experiencing, my thoughts, my mental states, my emotions, what's behind that? What does it feel like to witness those things? What does it feel like when I step out of the part that I'm playing? The mental states are an attribute of the part I'm playing. The thoughts are an attribute of the part I'm playing. The dramas that happen are an attribute of the part that I'm playing. What happens when I step behind that, go off stage for a moment, go off the set for a moment? Somebody said to me, it was really funny, they said, when Daniel Craig, who's James Bond, goes off set, he doesn't go and order a dry martini he has a cup of tea and in the same way when we what happens when we get off set from the part we're playing what is just there as that beautiful heart and the heart is amazing because on the one hand it is the, it is the source of your breath is contained within your heart the source of the sense i am from which thoughts come is traced back to the heart the witness is the heart. Awareness looks through the, the individual heart into the Maya, into the illusion, into the play. But the amazing thing is, is that although there's this sense I am, my heart, I am this heart, this heart is also connected to all life and all, everything is seen as heart from this place so there's this strange kind of paradox on the one hand you are an individual heart but when one is in there one senses totality of the heart this presence this suchness this awareness this inconceivable place of no mind You can't really remember what it's like to be the heart. But it's easy to be there again and again and again and again and recognize that in some incredible way you don't ever actually leave it. So our pain comes because we're, we are thinking that we're the thinker. We're thinking that our thoughts are a product of how life actually is. And we don't get, we don't see that our thoughts are actually a product of our mood or who we're being in that moment. Who you're being that life is gives you how you get it. Life does not emanate anything. If we can understand that, a major breakthrough happens. Life doesn't emanate anything. If life emanated something to us, we would all get it. But we don't. We all get everything differently. And we actually we get everything differently each time we encounter it. And this is very unnerving, so we try and solidify things and come to some sort of consensus. This is this and that is that, but it isn't that. How we get it is given by who we're being that it is. And that's, you know, that's strain and stress. Living in the mind. Living as the thinker. Identifying as the part we play. Thinking that our thoughts are born of reality when in fact they're just born of a mood or whatever happened just prior to that thought arising. But behind that there's peace. Behind that there's the observer. Behind that there's the witness. And the witness is the portal into awareness.
the witness is like the lens and you go through the lens in, and what's looking out through that lens is a witness, is, is awareness. It's literally like you can bring, we were doing an exercise the other day, I, 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 I. you can literally bring yourself out of your mind, literally bring yourself out of your mind and come back into your heart. And there's levels and degrees of that that are, are utterly wonderful. Because the heart is where silence is. The heart is where peace is. And the mind is noise. Mental states, we're all the time trying to develop different mental, mental states or change or manipulate mental states in order to get something. But it never really works because everything is so fleeting. But there is something that you don't have to manipulate anything to get because you already are it. And that's the heart. When you are flowing as the heart, there's no mistakes. Everything is appropriate. When you're flowing as the heart, you can completely disappear and still be enjoying immensely this life unfolding. Because how we get this life is a reflection of where we're looking from. If we're looking from the mind, we could be in paradise and still see and still not really be able to connect and enjoy. Because we're dominated by a mood generated out of our thoughts. But if we're flowing as a heart, then you can see heaven. You're not obstructing yourself, you're not interfering, you're not in your own way. You've gone quiet and you're complete and you're aware. You can see what actually is, how extraordinary and wonderful and amazing it actually is. heart-based reality, a mentally-based reality. The heart knows. The heart is the seat of knowledge. We have to bring our attention out of the world, out of mental states, out of our thinking, out of our emotions, out of our dramas and bring it back into the heart. Which is what happens every night when we sleep. But to do that without being asleep. And there is what they call samadhi. The samadhi of the natural state, which is unsurpassed, is not even a state. It's just how it is, and I am how it is. Everything else I've looked at. But this, I am. And it's here in the heart that this subject-object paradigm collapses. And I am what I'm feeling. And what I'm feeling is really indescribable, isness, joy, bliss. When you bring the consciousness to awareness, there's bliss. But it's, there's no one measuring it or talking about it. In the mental world, there's always measurements going on. Oh, I'm quite happy today. I'm not as happy as I was yesterday. I was really happy back then. Oh, I'm miserable today. Something all the time measuring, oh, I don't like this, I do like that, I don't like that person, that's true, that's not true, that's quite true. All the time measuring, measuring, measuring. But in the heart, there's none of that. There's just this beautiful, flowing feeling, being what is. 
and that's literally heaven heaven on earth and that's freedom that's liberation liberation from what thinking I'm the thinker liberation from identifying as the mind liberation from the suffering that comes from being run by emotions and the necessity to avoid them or the addiction to them the heart that I'm talking about cannot break heartbreak I've had it we've all probably had it heartbreak she left me great misery but she didn't create the heartbreak the heartbreak was a consequence of who I was being I created that for myself how is it that two lovers can come together have a great time and then part and one of them just flows on fine and the other is heartbroken you would think that if the heartbreak was real that it would they would both feel it because they were both together now they no it's all the heartbreak is generated by me the misery is generated by me and who I was being that the relationship was who I was being that the other person was but they weren't being that way about the relationship so they didn't they had a different reaction so the the real heart doesn't break and the what the heart that does break when we say I'm heartbroken that's your emotion that's your emotional world and yeah and that can take a long time to let go of and then you really see how woven it is into your psychological self when your heart breaks it triggers all of your issues pretty much doesn't it triggers your misery triggers your I'm not good enough it triggers you you're there's something wrong it triggers your you know everything is triggered by a heartbreak it is something it's an event that happens in this in the psychological mind that is seen and witnessed by something that is the true heart which nothing ever touches the true heart never gets broken the true heart is the ultimate refuge and it turns out I am that heart Being the heart, the breath, the energy of life is love. Being in the mind, love is more like a transaction, a negotiation, an expectation. It's different. There's not really love in a mentally based reality. How could there be? most relationships turn out to be psychological entanglements but when we are flowing as awareness as a heart being then we will attract someone else who's like that and it's not like this it's like that and the space in between is love very simple and it's not a psychological workout because it's authentic and it's real so fantastic possibilities coming for relationships where we're truly relating and not entangling anyway our time is up if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to talk about I'm happy to do that always nice to know and if you want to see these videos when they come off uh, into the wild online festivals then they are on Timian Talks T-I-M-A-E-O-N Timian Talks YouTube channel they're all there and uh, if you'd like a one-to-one -one with me which can be helpful some people have found that um, we can do it online or in real life and I do that on a donation basis 
So I'm happy to do that if you feel it would be helpful. And if it, you're intrigued or interested, give it a go. So, have a wonderful day. Choose the heart. You won't regret it.